Hey, welcome to Coffee and Tools. This week we're going to put a sled on the Tack Life table saw. Same rules can kind of apply to just about any table saw and I'm going to give you a bunch of options of how you could build one. I'm going to make a specific one for this uh, table saw using some of the things that I have around the workshop. I've got an old piece of MDF, I've got some 2x4s laying around. We can make a nice sled for this guy. The other thing I did do is I, I made some 3D stuff. And the 3D printer is great, but you can make these out of wood. You don't have to make these out of, you know, 3D printer stuff or something. Now these two pieces here, a little different story. But we'll get into all that. I want to show you the first problem that I encountered and I was like, you know what, it's actually sort of a good thing. This is going to work. So hang with me. All right, clean. Yeah, so the, the first problem that you're going to encounter is, is these right here. This is a stop on a, this is a Tack Life uh, table saw and it has this uh, edge on the back side of it that's screwed in. It supports the table so you sort of don't want to remove it. I don't want to get into cutting it all. Uh, I printed these and I did them on a 3D printer which I will probably, when I get a chance, I will probably post these on uh, Thingiverse. So if anybody has a Tack Life saw and they want to make runners like this for their uh, sled project, they can download and, you know, make them. They're really not that hard to draw up. Uh, did a counter bore on the back side, so the screws will be up inside there really nicely when, they, uh, when we get this together. This was a situation, though. I wanted to just show this to you. This particular uh, project was similar to the one I did on my uh, Craftsman saw a while back, but but I've got the rid of the Craftsman table saw that's long gone. And here's the thing, it stops right there. But when I took a look at the overall situation here where the blade is located, and consider this is my sled would be at the finish, then my cut is already pretty much gone past the center of the blade here, whatever wood I would be, lumber, you know, that I would be cutting in the sled. So I can come back here with the sled back as far as here or even further for like a two by four or something like that to run the sled with back and forth. And I'm not, you know, I'm not losing anything because when I stop here, it's sort of safe. It means I, I didn't go any further. So I know that my stop is, is right there. It's fixed and it's actually cool. It's, it's almost like a, a safety thing where I won't go too far with the sled or something. So that actually will work just fine. I don't know if you'll be able to see the profile on these or not very well. Focus, focus, yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, but a, the other ticket I had to worry about, and we'll still find out, I guess we'll find out today, is the top here. When we get these in here and I get the board, uh, so when I get the board screwed into this, there could be a problem with friction because if the board pulls to this tight and it also hits the table, then you're gonna have a bit of a friction problem this way. You sort of want a really nice balance between it. And I drew this so this is just a, you know, oh, a half a millimeter or something higher. Now, if you have uh, lumber and you wanna make these out of wood, which you can, these are 3D printed again, but you could make these out of wood. The other place I would go, if you don't wanna do the runner thing, is do them on the outside like this and you, you, you've got this action. So you can you know, run this back and forth on your table saw and have a board screwed to this and screwed to one on the other side and just slide back and forth. And that's gonna give you probably the same precision, the same action as, a, as most sleds are gonna do anyways. So dimensionally, the sled, I've seen really small sleds, really big sleds, and I think in this case, the best thing to do would be to build a sled that is no bigger than the actual original saw top that is where the top ends and not this extension piece even because you don't need that much sled I don't believe and the other thing was obviously this can be a stop so the only thing I have to worry about dimensionally is coming back here and saying okay I want a 2 by 4 or something on my sled back here that I'm you know running my sled with so I really want to come back to about here Fucking battery or something isn't it yeah I think it is. uh, so quick dimension we want the 2x4 plus the sled, so I'm going to measure this off to the center of the blade and somewhere about here is where I want to stop. So really it's at 12 inches, so at 13 and a half 
if I add the two by four in, which is gonna be, you know, my handle kind of thing, that is how deep I want that sled to be. I could make it deeper, but there's no reason to. Okay, a quick word about uh, this particular board here. It's a MDF piece of uh, board. It's actually a finished piece of, uh, well, so-called furniture. I found this at a consignment store, and what happened is the people had purchased the furniture, and this board was like a shelf board or something, and they didn't want it. So they left it at the store. So I offered the manager a couple dollars for it, and he says, absolutely, you know, give me a couple dollars, and uh, it's yours. Okay, partners, are we ready? We're going to cut this. Notice I've got my uh, good old uh, tack life fence. I've got the whole thing extended out because this is a fairly large board. In some of my previous saws, this would have been a very difficult uh, cut. Anyway, let's... So we're going to do 13 and a half. Okay. So there, this is going to be our sled. The fun part of making a sled. <laughs> You gotta take this down like that. All right, no, still too. Okay, there's no blade there now. Now this is where the setup thing gets a little funky. And what you wanna do is get your rails in so we can line this up. And what I did was I drew these. These are the furthest points. These are the closest points. So you see the, the holes are actually off center this way to help hold the uh, board. So we're gonna plug these in and there we go. Now, if I wanted to get really uh, fun with this thing, I could probably bring this up to here, uh, measure it, and what I want to do in this case is actually square the whole board up to the saw and center it. So let's see how it we're 24, so we need 12. So theoretically, to center this up, 12 inches, if we want to do that, that is a little offset of the rail, again, because the way the manufacturer did these rails. If we want to center the rails, we're going to be further over. I would prefer to have the blade in the center of my workpiece, so we're going to go with that. Now, I'm going to push these back off, and what's happening is I've actually exposed the screws underneath so I can drive the screws up through once I've got all this squared up. And I'm going to back you up just a little bit. There. Now you can kind of see what's going on. I'm going down underneath and I've got some three quarter inch number six uh, Phillips head type little screws. Just just little guys. Focus. Focus. Yeah, I didn't think so. I may. <laughs> and uh, what I'll do is I'll drive these in. Let me get my screw started. That's tight. There we go. Yep. And yeah, it's still not a very nice tool. Oh, well, perfect for what we need, I guess. Depending on how anal you are, and I'm pretty anal, I'm actually going to run this for the planer and make a nice flat. 2x4. I might even run the whole thing back and forth through the planer a few times to square this lumber up because dimensionally, I'll be honest, we really don't care if we lose a quarter of an inch here or an eighth of an inch. It, it doesn't really matter because all this is is to hold on to that sled to, you know, go back and forth. So I'm going to square it up a little bit because I'm uh, whatever. Okay, we're recording again. Okay, so 2x4, uh, shaved it down square on this end, uh, ran it through the planer a couple times. And really, this is going to be our connecting piece here. We're going to glue this in place. And theoretically, this is actually showing square with the blade. So if I just square this up here with this, I actually should be okay. Now, the other piece that you usually would make 
uh, would be a strip across the back, of course, put something back there again to... So the next step, uh, I put a 1x4 on the back side here, glued it in, got the clamps on it, and we've got to wait for the glue to set up. I'm going to be putting countersink screws into uh, all this lumber, you know, from this side to this side, that side, that side. Away from the blade, the blade area. Do not want to get machine screws in a blade area. So this this is this is where we're at right now. <clears throat> and as soon as this gets uh, some screws in it, I think we'll get the clamps off uh, within the hour. Turn this around because this is obviously the front. This is just the back. Okay. Okay. While the glue is hardening up and the clamps are holding in place, uh, we're going to go ahead and put both rails back on. Uh, I cleaned them up a little bit with some sandpaper just to kind of take any edges off. And now we're ready for the uh, the full blown, you know, installation. So I'm going to screw them back in now. Okay. Yep. And everybody, this is uh, tight this time. Around. So first time I put these on, I put them on loose just to check to make sure it didn't have a, any kind of a binding problem here with the table. So, good to go. Okay, down. Let's get the clamps off. So this is the finish right here. Uh, pretty basic, you know, got the board, got a backboard, a front board. Really could use a place to put some handles here. The other feature that I'd point out is you could put a two by four block of wood or something back here. That would completely keep the blade out of your face. The blade itself, normally I do notching or small cuts and stuff on a, you know, on a sled. So I don't really bring the blade up very high. The blade is really not that high even right now. But that's about all I need for, uh, you know, the sled. I've put some Johnson paste wax underneath and also on the uh, saw itself a little bit. And that just helps her to just smoothly, oh my God, smooth as heck. Just gliding back and forth. One other tip, always, you know, put the old speed square on up against the blade and just make sure and I can tell you straight out wow I mean she is she's dead on she's right where she's supposed to be and uh, absolute perfect line right across there so simple easy project not really that much involved I guess but what a great little tool thanks for watching coffee and tools please like and subscribe and I'll throw a bonus piece in in here at the end